Year 11, The Rule of Uncle Jam I stood next to Sprite the 141st. This tribute was complete. So what's the use of this thing, anyway? You know, the dwarf said, ignoring me, it doesn't really look like a mug to me. More like a gaping anus. One that's bleeding heavily. A hemorrhaging anus. I nodded my head slightly, just out of force of habit of agreeing with others. Then I realized that I should just walk away. Animal dissectors were always different, and that's putting it politely. Fucked up is more apt. We'd set off from the mountain homes nearly two years ago. 458 of us dwarfs. The estimate of riches of headshoots from the trader's stories were mind-boggling. Even if only a quarter of the veins that were in stories actually existed, it was enough to make every dwarf there independently wealthy. Of course, what it was actually like around headshoots was always omitted, unfortunately. I thought I was tough shit in the mountain homes, a real asshole who didn't take shit. This, though, could it really exist? Most of us set off cheerfully, two donkeys each, full of supplies. I couldn't remember much after that. Dead animals that walked, somehow stronger than when they were alive, fiercer. I remember a lot of blood and limbs, dwarf screams muffled by the rock as their heads were pushed into the ground by... by something... I ran through the mists, but it was forever. I never knew plains of black rock could burn. None of the donkeys survived. We only had what we were wearing. Only about thirty of us made it. Then, once we got here, a child ordered us to start building this tribute before we even settled inside. I couldn't remember if he was here already or if he'd traveled with us. Why had we listened to a child? I remember somebody called him Spoon Boy. Those before us, the ones already here, there were two small groups. One was a group of working doors. They didn't speak, and they tried not to look at us. They were so dirty. The other group, we'd only seen fleeting glimpses. They looked like soldiers. Even the normally pompous nobility would stay silent when we saw one, instead of trying to tell them what to do. After tribute was built, everybody stood around nervously. Nobody invited us into the home, nor did anyone give us an idea what the layout was like. Spoon Boy had disappeared. Maybe we'd been hallucinating him, all of us together. I tried to take control. First thing, we needed protection. Was the military strong here? I had no idea. Even if they were, why would they help us? Plus, it was really fucking dangerous out there. I called Hankor over. He told me early that he'd done some elven gobbo wrestling back in the mountain homes. Freak. Take all the Agridors and start practicing your warcraft. Really? Us? All right. Do you know where the barracks are? No. I'm sure they're around here somewhere. We all need to scout this place out. Squad The Lean Lancers has been formed. It consists of Wandering Knitter Lisatzaneg, Leader, Hankor Bebmaloltar, Banker, El Rodento Momuzang, Recruit, Jimiel Rithagast, Recruit, Traxis the Fourth, Nicol Neal, Recruit. As I was talking to Hankor, I saw red eyes staring me down in the distance. Leaning around the corner was one of the damned old soldiers. I saw the plate he was wearing. It looked like it had been inscribed. It was covered in all sorts of blood, guts, vomit, and whatever else. But something shone through. Was it really adamantine? Were the rumors really true? Long ago, the queen had left for head shoots. At the time, there were rumors of a great find in the mountain. The royal communications stopped soon after she stated she had arrived there. Nobody knew what had happened. The traders asked those of headshoots, but never got a straight answer. Now that I had arrived and been inside, I was sure either the queen was dead or had thrown off nobility and was unrecognizable. Oh, the optimism of the mountain homes. One of these assholes is always surrounded by cats. I hated cats, absolutely. Right now, my fear prevented me from doing anything about it. 
How long would that last? If I wasn't going to go mad, I had to be aggressive. I looked at the newcomers around me. They were mixed with fear and despair. They knew this was the beginning of the end of their lives. Even if they weren't going to die, everything they'd ever expected to accomplish in a civil society was at an end. The first two weeks had been quiet. We'd been trying to clean up the fortress, rebuilding it from whatever had happened before. The nobility was annoying, requesting bronze this, clear glass that. Nobody really cared, though. Fuck the nobles. Do they forget so quickly? Surely there must have been nobility before they arrived. When it happened to them. Then the goblins came. The goblins wanted the riches here. We holed up inside, waiting. A few days passed. We were sitting in the alcohol storage, staring at the ground. Tremendous Majestic spoke up. I'm going to go talk to them. He jumped off the barrel of spirits. I'm going to tell them to leave. Before anyone could say anything, she was out the door. The leader of the goblin squad, a bowman, greeted Tremendous with a few shots. One, two, three. Hey, st stop firing! Tremendous dodged up and down as each shot missed. Four, five, six. Six arrows left in the quiver, and then seven, eight. Thwack! Tremendous majestic Zephon Massos, weaver, has been shot and killed. Holistic detective arrived, alone. Holistic sliced four goblins, then some of his buddies arrived. They faced down the squad leader, but... Wait, what? Wandering Knitter has been shot and killed, just kaput. This sent the other dwarfs into retreat, except for Tyskill. Tyskill stayed behind. He disappeared under the bodies and limbs. Sometimes you'd be able to catch him surface once in a while. When it was done, he was the only one standing. Then the others showed up. Before Tyskill ducked back inside the fortress, there was a shout from the top of the mountain. So, you beat those jackasses. They're not worthy of the titles they carry. You'll get yours! Tyskill looked up. It was Snowdoob, the leader of the local goblin settlement, an elite crossbow goblin man. During the siege, Helyaning got strung out. Well, he is a bowyer. Helyaning Olintarmid has claimed a bowyer's workshop. I found out we didn't have any bow-making places. I built one in some noble's office. Meanwhile, Snowdoob sent out a squad to attack while his main squad went and... left the map. Hankor came outside with his trusty steel battle-axe ready to murder some goblins, but he was by himself and started to get overwhelmed. The other dwarfs came up and saved him before too much damage was done. No yellow or red injuries. The rest of the goblins placed themselves on a ledge overlooking the entrance. The dwarfs could see them up there, so both parties froze. I couldn't get the dwarfs to move up the ledge to fight them. A Meister says, fuck the stalemate, and goes for it, with just a crossbow, and no ammo. A Meister Ingish Stukan, crazy cat lady, has been struck down. Squad the Geared Clouds has been annihilated. Since I couldn't move the other dwarfs out, the predictable results happened. Once the goblins finally launched their attack after killing a Meister, Dwarf time begins. Helyaning begins to work on his construction at the same time. The fortress cats slowly realize their caretaker is no longer taking care of them. Helyaning Olintarmid, Bowyer, has created Kinnis Nothis, Meadow Grieved, an Oaken Crossbow. This is an Oaken Crossbow. All craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with basalt and encircled with bands of oak and granite. This object is adorned with hanging rings of alder and menaces with spikes of cave lobster shell and citrine. On the item is an image of a thick crescent in oak. On the item is an image of three lizards in copper. On the item is an image of a thick crescent in iron. On the item is an image of dwarves in gold opal. The dwarves are traveling. So hey, something amazingly useful. Wouldn't it be romantic if Helyaning trained up to be a Marks dwarf with his own creation? 
However, after Hellyanning puts on his armor, he falls down the stairs and breaks his head open. So I switch him back to Bowyer, and maybe he'll get better and pump out crossbows for everyone later. The Belgian Melbille Cotton mechanic has given birth to a girl. Congrats to the Belgian and Crackmaster on their new baby. Something strange is happening above the lava here. A massive plume of smoke and dust billows up from the magma pool at the base of Tribute's ever-pouring cup. Looks like Xenu the Count is in that cloud of dust. So's this kid. Ah, um, whoops. Xenu Abenomal, Count, is drastically injured. Xenu Abenomal, Count's mandates have ended. Hey, we fulfilled a mandate. In other news, superweapon Manx is loaded. Horrors. Demons in the deep. Um, I thought all the demons were dead. Durendal the peasant versus Mortham Fly Lucky, the spirit of fire. Yeah, Durendal didn't last long. Full peasant funeral will be given, i.e. nothing. A granite table has been destroyed by Mothram. This guy's kind of an asshole, I think. The demon blows off the door to whatever room this is. Sorellin tries to peer into the smoke and see what's beyond. Nemo 2342 is behind him, decked out in full adamantine plate. What's going to happen and... Wait, what? The demon is now a pile of ashes. One hit, one kill. Magma continues to flow sporadically from tribute, flooding the plains. The dwarves desperately attempt to wall it off. The dwarves were unable to complete a floor. Athas Alathost, Countess Consort's mandates have ended. She has died in the heat. Oh god, no. Tribute, why? Why the consort as well? Why couldn't you complete the floor to save her life, White Cloak? You bastard! El Rodento Cryptred, the dwarf, has died in the year 115. El Rodento died during some crazy sparring accident. Nobody is taking responsibility for his murder, and they're continuing on as if nothing happened. A massive pile of caged animals, vegetables, and wooden and rope reed goods lays upon the floor. I stole all this shit from the elves when they came. First I just stole stuff, then I deconstructed the trading depot to take everything else. The most awesome thing is a giant jaguar. The depot has since been rebuilt elsewhere. Everything here is forbidden because... I didn't want the dwarfs to spend their time hauling everything. A kidnapper has made off with the child Professor Fling Libadnuthkot. Professor Fling now lives with the goblins. It's probably an upgrade from head shoots, honestly. This is the Manx. I hope to show off the operation of this simple-looking device later. The Count Mestos Osus Doduk has arrived. Dungeon Master Rimtar Nokgolrigoth has arrived. Some migrants have decided to brave this terrifying place, knowing it may be their tomb. Wow. Amazing. Another count. They certainly push him out back at the mountain homes. The list of named dwarves in headshoots has been extended, and now reads as follows. Spooky Lizard, Hellioning, White Paper, Gary Khan, Sprite the 141st, Travbot, Golgozor, Kutan, Robin Daybird, The Strangest Finch, Autoprint, Crackmaster, Manuel Calavera, Frog the Second, Lackloss, Mortal Sword, Judenhauer, Captain Awesome the Second, the Belgian, Phalius, OK, Go, etc., Robot Uprising, White Cloak, Olesh, Manic Mole, Ledna, Tombsgrave, The White Crane, 
Smuggins, Nemo, 2342, Holistic Detective, Mofetta, Tyskill, Sorellen, Rebuilt Box, Traxus the Fourth, Frederick, Spermy Smurf, Jimyel, Hankor, McKeel, Uncle Jam, Swat Jester, Shadow Gamer, Tag Plastic, Spoon Boy, and Spanky Burns. Headshoots has been retitled A City thanks to the recent immigration of insane and exiled dwarfs. Most incoming dwarfs have been enlisted in the various projects that are being built in the bustling city of Headshoots. A fire imp whizzes a fireball past a group of dwarfs. Nemo 2432 felt the heat on that one. <sighs> that was a certain death sentence had it hit. The fire imp is flying off a cliff. Remember that dwarfs run towards airborne enemies. Nemo 2432 gave him quite a whack. Robin Daybird finds this goblin next to the fortress entrance. I tell Robin Daybird to fight, because fighting is the only way. Robin Daybird's heart has been severely injured. Uh, you kind of need your heart to live. Robin Daybird perishes from blood loss sometime soon after this. Then, a bunch more goblins show up like they're going to kick ass and not even take names. The goblins corner white paper somewhere and kill him. Tag Plastic is running for his life. They've been invited to a blanket party. But then, Holistic Detective arrives on the scene. The goblins can't stand up to real dwarfs. Tag Plastic has been severely injured. Their left lower arm is broken. Tag Plastic nearly died. Later on, I saw Otto Print carrying around Tag Plastic in these tunnels. Don't know what he was doing with him. Otto Print is the green dwarf. Captain Awesome the Second, Thosik Vabok, grower, withdraws from society. I expect some excellent growing implements. Captain Awesome the Second has claimed a mason's workshop. Oh, no. No one even considered making the journey to such a cursed death trap this season. Oh. Frog posted, I bet by this point trying to make sense of Headshoot's layout is like asking an epileptic retard tripping on acid to put together a jigsaw puzzle missing half the pieces during Hurricane Katrina. I want to take a peek at the fort save file, but I've been holding off until the last possible moment so I can be blown back by its sheer convoluted majesty as much as possible. Also, I'm Keeper of Histories. Badass! Man, you have no idea. The new Count came and he still doesn't have a room because I couldn't fucking find it. So you've all seen the tribute. It has been modified. What has it become? Can it be? Yes. Tribute weapon. Hopefully it works. It's untested. Welcome to the last season of my reign as organizer. The old dwarf Captain Awesome died after he went insane and moped around the fort for a while. Head shoots is mighty depressing. The Count Ledna went crazy after making amazing demands that went unfulfilled. The Count then threw himself into tribute. Counts? Zero. Tribute? Two. Some migrants have decided to brave this terrifying place, knowing it may be their tomb. Nine brave, in other words, stupid, dwarfs arrive at Head Shoots. I think there was a wrestler in there. All the dwarfs in the original post were named. There's quite a few left, but I'll give Orange Soda the chance to kit these guys out. Picture not found. This is where Tag Plastic is trying to recuperate. This enormous room that, for some reason, had one bed built in it. I still don't know where this is. I have to hotkey in and out of it. No other dwarfs come down here to do anything. Picture not found. Well, there goes the Countess. I've disappointingly eliminated two pairs of Count and Countesses during my overwatch. 
Malin Zesurdim has claimed a clothier's shop. Malin chains herself to the clothes workshop in protest of child sweatshops. Malin has begun a mysterious construction. Wow, you didn't want impossible shit like that Captain Awesome did. I seriously don't know what this fort doesn't have at this point. Hint, it'll be alcohol if Orange Soda doesn't get cracking on that. Malin Zesurdim, Crafts Dwarf, has created Othiel Dumat, the Weak Roughness, a giant cave spider silk shirt. This is a giant cave spider silk shirt. All Crafts Dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with gold opal, decorated with clear glass, and encircled with bands of giant cave spider silk, gold opal, and human bone. It is made from giant cave spider silk cloth. This object menaces with spikes of prace, iron, and granite. On the item is an image of a thick crescent in cave spider silk. It's amazing. A silk wife beater. This has so much stuff on it, it took seven human bones. Where did we even get human bones from? Also, looking at the stock screen... Why do we have one dwarf skin? The worth is just over a hundred thousand dwarf bucks on this artifact, which in a normal game would be pretty kicking. So at this point, I was filling up tribute weapon, and a magma flow bursts out onto the land. Oh my god, don't use rock hatch covers with lava, even if they're shut tight. Seems like a pretty harmless place, though. Oh no, okay go etc. is on fire. Forbid his body, forbid his clothes, it, it it should be okay, right? Open the door, it it should be fine. Smoke is in the booze stockpile. Oh no, Lackloss is on fire and he's running towards the alcohol. Turn around, mister! The room is filled with boiling dwarven wine smoke. Oh no, oh no, oh no. But somehow, somehow, Armok smiled on us today and the chain reaction we all feared did not happen. We may not get so lucky in the future. Shadow gamer Olin Murak, peasant, has given birth to a girl. Hooray! Population growth is no longer negative. I forget who wears the pants in the relationship, though. Thus endeth my turn. Some fortress wealth was added in the past year, hopefully encouraging more migrants. I think the population is plus five or so with the new migrants and all the death combined. Our military force is exactly the same. I ended up adding just as many that died, and they're all champions now. Alcohol's getting low. I tried several times to brew some more, but we have no barrels. We also have no wood accessible. Orange soda? You might want to unforbid the pile of crap I stole from the elves near the entrance. See if there's wood in there. Tribute weapon is still filling up. I have my doubts it'll fill up at all. You might have to add some repumps midway, or an extra set at the beginning if you want to work on it. The lever to open the gold hatch is in the second microcline one on the main hall, I think. The other microcline lever releases all the cats from their cage. <laughs>